This is the Audit Manager module from the 27K1 ISMS software. As you can see, you access it through clicking on Audit Manager, and this gives you access to the creation of audit plans and audit activities. The work that's undertaken within these two sections leads to reports, but it also draws down upon some work that you might have done previously in the Getting Started section, because you can do audits on departments and locations which are submitted earlier on. You can also do audits on suppliers as well, which may have been submitted in the Asset Manager. But for now, let's go into the audit plans and see how they're created. So we click on audit plans and I've got a few audit plans which have been created previously, but to keep things fairly straightforward, let's focus on this server audit, which we've made a plan and a title around. I've nominated an audit leader and it's a bi-monthly audit. It could be more frequently or less frequently. I've put in a scope. The scope happens to be the same as the audit purpose and objectives, but yours may necessarily be different. And I've identified risks to the processes. And indeed, in this case, I need to conform or rather confirm that there's an uninterruptible power supply. I can toggle switch that it confirms or rather I can confirm that it conforms to the ISMS and I've got a number of choices of the type of audit that I want to run. But in this case, because it's a server, it's another type of audit. It's not an audit of clauses or controls or any other type. But this is where that data that you previously submitted with regard to departments and locations and suppliers is pulled through. Clearly, I need to link to the audit leader's competence. And because it's Peter Schwalbe, then there may well be a file on him held in SharePoint, and this is the link. And similarly, I've got a hyperlink to all the audit plans. And in this particular case, that's held on the SharePoint folder under audit server. I can take notes, and this is the information that I need to populate. If I were to look at another audit type, for example, an ISMS database backup, then I've ticked these various types. And, and, and this has implications for the next section of where we're going to go and what we're going to do. But for now, I've put this audit plan together for the server, and this therefore allows me to create an audit plan, which I've got a choice of with respect to PDFs. So if I just click one of them, and you can see the audit plan report. Date and time, it's for this bi-monthly audit of the server, as you can see, and it reflects all the information that has been populated on that particular page with regard to all the activities that I want to start and when I want to start it. So that's my audit plan. Let's go back to creating the audit activity. So previously with regard to Barbara Windsor's doing this server audit, so I've got my leader, Barbara is the auditee, I've got my scope and objectives and my criteria. I can send out here an invitation to the auditee. So that would go to Barbara to say, this is a heads up for you, Barbara, to tell you that there's going to be uh, an audit taking place. So I could, I could send that out with an invitation using the Office 365 capability. And these are the planned times for starting and completing the audit itself. Now, because it's falls under the category of other audit type, because it's a server, let us go and see what we do in this particular section. So by clicking on the tab, what I've been able to do is ask some questions. And I can also raise non-conformances that come out of this. And I can do that in a number of ways, either by toggle switching here, or just simply clicking here and raising a non-conformance. And if I raise a non-conformance and record it, that will be recorded in the conformance manager and we will know from the reports that it has come from audits as opposed to being raised anywhere else within the system. So if I want to, I can ask another question. So let's go here. And it, once we wish to ask another question, we've got some choices. So these are previously asked questions, which we could repeat. So we could, we could repeat this one if we wished, and we could copy and paste that. Well, that's already been copied and pasted, but we could save that. 
and that would be um, repeated. Or <coughs> let's just delete that. Not really where I wanted to go. But you can see you can delete questions as well. Let's ask a different question. So here we'll go to this little indicator. And what the system does for you is it provides you with some sample questions. It could be the case that you are an inexperienced auditor, in which case here would be some sample questions that have been pre-populated that you might wish to choose from. So these ones relate to documents. Here are sample questions relating to controls. These are relating to activities of people in departments. Okay. So it could well be that we'd like to copy one of these questions because they're very valid. And let's, let's go to this one. What proof can be used to demonstrate your answer? We can copy it. We can pop it in the box just here. And we'll save that. And now that's come up here. So we can run some observations and so on. So if we're, if we're reviewing the server, we can, we can say, so that's good. We found that full database backups are completed. Are we going to raise a non-conformance? No. So the question is asked with the necessary evidence. That's great. We can save that and we could ask more questions or we could or we could ask another question which might have a non-conformance associated with it. So if we scroll down, um, actually that one's already been answered, but you know, if we wanted to raise a non-conformance, we could go there, save that and having raised a non-conformance. So this is how we can set questions for our audits. And having done that, we can look in the um, in the reports and then go to the audit manager reports. The audit plan reports are here. The server audit has taken place. It's bi-monthly. These are the links. It's in conformance with the ISMS. So that's all good. The reports are here with the server. We have now asked two questions because we asked an additional question. And if we scroll across, we can, see other, we can see other information around this, all there for the auditor. And lastly, we can look at the audit schedule. So we've got a server audit, which is one of the audits that we're running. Activity planned, activity completed. This is on this server. It may not be visible to us weekly, but if we look at it quarterly, we can see at the back quarter of 2021, we've got this completed audit. We can click upon it, and this takes us back to our audit activity, which we raised the report around. And of course, we've got a history log of this as well. So going back to the reports, just to highlight a few features in the audit manager reports. In the audit schedule, I've shown the audit of the server. We've got site perimeter audit and so on. Again, in the audit schedule, we can see controls and clauses and other elements of our ISMS which we'd like to audit. And conversely, we've got audits which aren't in the schedule. So if I were to click on, for example, the controls that we've audited so far, I can see that these are controls that have been audited. And if we look on them, We've got dates, so we can go and click on upon them. So we can see that 511, for example, was audited here. So conversely, if we look at Annex A controls, which have yet to be audited and are not in the schedule, we haven't got 511, but in Section 5, we've got 5.1.2. And we can see from the Control Manager, which we looked at earlier, the implementation status of that control. So by doing the audits and from the reports in the audit manager, we can absolutely see what aspects of our ISMS have been audited and what aspects remain to be audited or their auditors remain to be complete. So with this solution, with this section of the ISMS, the audit manager, you've got an absolutely superb way of 
undertaking audits right across the range of everything that you do within your ISMS. It's very comprehensive. Good luck using it. Thank you for your time.